Hi guys, this is a long plane review for Postman Pat on the Amstrad CPC, released by Alternative Software in 1989. Now for those of you who don't know who he is, Postman Pat is a very British stop motion animation for kids TV, which started in 1981 and has basically ran right up until present day, culminating in a rather disappointing movie a few years back though. Uh, however, generally, Postman Pat has been enduringly popular with young children and parents alike for nearly 40 years and is very much ingrained in our British culture now. And even back in 1988, Alternative Software sniffing out a lucrative market in games aimed at children uh, based on the kids TV stuff were very keen on capitalizing on Pat's success securing the rights to the game. Uh, apparently this was released at Christmas 1988 although it's actually hard to pin down an actual release date. Uh, as far as I can, close as I can make it, it dropped somewhere in around August of 1989. And yes, arm yourself with a map before playing this game as well you want don't get too frustrated. Anyway, let's kick things off here. Um, okay, so Postman Pat comes to your computer screen in this highly entertaining and colourful arcade game, reads the back of the box. Uh, the game has an easy version suitable for younger children and a hard version for the serious gamer. This option chosen from a menu when the game is loaded. And it has indeed loaded after a, a pretty okay loading screen. A very nice looking title screen and we hear the famous Postman Pat music and theme song that you heard at the start of every episode. We've got a high score table here and a menu. So you can use a keyboard or joystick, read find the keys, change from difficult and easy, more on that later and turn the music off. Now guys if you don't like this music and it's going to bother you, you may not like the rest of this video, I'm warning you now. But actually, this is actually a really, really good rendition of the Postman Pat's theme. And we start off at Postman Pat's house. And the first thing we need to do is get to the uh, post office to collect our uh, parcels and letters for our delivery round. And it's a single screen affair with lovely bright colourful graphics, lovely bright colour music. And it's all rather jolly. And here's the post office. And it automatically gets out and then you can move Pat around the post office here. I believe is it Mrs. Gockin to the post office? I don't know. Anyway, uh, she tells us we've got to deliver three letters. Uh, we'll talk about manoeuvring Pat's van in a minute. Now the letters are, are, are always delivered in the, the little section of village here. There's about sort of three horizontal rows worth of houses. Ah, there's a flashing house. Press the fire button and he throws a letter out, paperboy style. And there's another house there. So it's often worth uh, when you go off a, a screen after you've done a delivery, go back on it again, you never know. The next house might have spawned there, but it won't spawn whilst you're on the same screen as it. Okay, and an annoying little bug there is that sometimes the letter flies in the wrong direction. But anyway, there we go, I'm reversing backwards, and it tells us to go to the post office and watch out for the cyclists. More on that in a bit. I'm going to go back to the, the uh, post office and then we'll get, hopefully, get given a mission. Yes, so there's missions in this game. <laughs> but so basically guys, the Americans had Paperboy and the British, we had Post and Pat the Computer Game. In fact, this does play like a cross between um, Paperboy and Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Why GTA? Well, it's an overhead driving, uh, driving game of you racing around the streets of a village rather than a city doing missions. Like this one, we've got a parcel delivery to Mrs. Hubbard. Um, yes, um, Pat's missions can involve anything from uh, delivering a parcel to rounding up sheep. Okay, we're getting a little bit excited there, but and with the GTA comparison. <laughs> but there are missions, and there's essentially three of them. Uh, in between missions, Pat has to deliver letters, 
and each letter delivery round increases by one letter each time. The three missions consist of the first being delivering a parcel to George Lancaster, which is the easiest one, but it's actually spawned us onto the second one, which is Mrs. Hubbard's doctor's prescription. Mrs. Hubbard's house is here. We'll deliver the parcel and then she will uh, tell us to go to the doctors to pick up her prescription. And the third and final mission is uh, Peter Hogg's Sheep. And uh, more on that in a bit. So, uh, so in this long play, guys, basically, we're going to do the three missions and basically three rounds, possibly meaning three days. Now a round is basically a few letter deliveries and one mission. And uh, we're going up to the point where we have um, a delivery of up to 10 letters. Because really the game goes no further. Oh, any crash there? Mind me. And we're at the doctor's now. Please take this prescription to Miss Hubbard. There we go. So we're going back to exactly where we've just been. Okay. Uh, oh, check the cyclist there. The cyclist was always at the top of the plane area and will appear in um, locations where there's a left and right exit in a straight line. For example, like the road we've just been on. More than a cyclist in a bit. Uh, Mr. Hubbard thanks us, and we return to the depot. Okay, now note that sometimes the missions can occur in a different order and can be a bit random. Ooh, really got the cyclist there. Uh, normally they should happen in the order described above, which uh, was like parcel to George Lanc Lancaster, M Mrs. Hubbard's doctor's prescription, and then lastly Peter Hogg's sheep. Uh, because in that order the missions increase in size and difficulty, so that kind of makes sense. However, I have done runs where I ended up doing, um, like for example, George Lancaster's parcel and the sheep mission, both of them twice in a row, and Mrs. Hubbard's mission not spawning at all, which you've literally just done. Um, and sometimes I just get the same mission over and over and over and over, or they're uh, out of order. But usually it goes George Lancaster, Mrs. Hubbard, and then the, the sheep mission. Um, but I think maybe the, it gets a bit, the game gets a bit confused because I crashed the van once when I was doing those um, runs. And it made the Amstrad lose its mind somewhat. Hmm. Uh, talking of which, there are bugs and glitches in the game. Some we may see, others we won't in this long play. Uh, I mean, firstly, I should point out there's a game-breaking bug on the sheep mission, on the Am uh, only on the Amstrad version, I believe, where the game will basically crash on the second time you come to do the sheep mission. But we're playing the bug fix version here. But this will, um, because this was actually released with a game breaking bug in it, and this will mean the game will lose marks at my end overall end score at the end of the video. Uh, other bugs include the van getting permanently stuck, or Pat being unable to get uh, back in the van. Uh, but to be fair, it's rare that happens. So this is this is just, you saw the cyclist there. This is another stretch of road here and here where the cyclist might spawn. The cyclist won't spawn here because there's no left exit. But the cyclist might spawn on this bit here. So always trying to keep to like the uh, bottom or to the right of the road if you're going in that direction. Could the cyclist could spawn here as well. And there's only about two other locations further south where the cyclist might spawn. And the cyclist is, becomes a bit of the bane of our existence a bit. Um, because we're on the difficult mode here, where we can crash the van into any of the walls and we lose the van. We can crash the, uh, the van into the cyclist and uh, lose the van that way as well. And the van is actually quite difficult to control. Um, oh, we've got a parcel delivered to George Lancaster. So essentially this is, well, this is our second mission on the long play, but really kind of like the first and easiest mission on the game. So cool, we're making good progress. And George Lancaster is all the way over to the west of the uh, village and area. And the van is really awkward to control, actually, and perhaps not as intuitive as you, as you might think it would be. So, um, you're not using left and right all the time to be turning left, the van left and right. Um, 
you are pushing the, the, the direction key of where you want the van to go. So in most sort of overhead driving games, you're normally pushing forward to accelerate, right? Which you don't do in this game, it's auto accelerate. Well, you push it once and it just uh, goes at the same speed constantly. And on the other top-down racing games, you push left to turn the van left in whatever direction it's going in, or push right. So, but in this, it's different. So, for example here, I'm pushing right and then I'm pushing down. Now I push left, now I reverse, and I'm pushing right to go forward again. So you're pushing in the direction of the of the plane area axis. Does that make sense, guys? It's really hard to get used to because we're used to like other driving games where you're just pushing left or right. This time you have to be thinking about pushing up, down, left, and right to go in the direction you want to go. And once you sort of get your head around it, it's not too hard. And don't be afraid to reverse the van as well because it goes at the same speed and it doesn't really make a difference to your controls. It just feels a bit odd and unusual. The other thing to watch out for is those orange oil slicks as well because they will push you off to the side a bit, like there. That could have quite easily pushed me into the wall of the post office there, so it was worth avoiding. But otherwise, guys, this this is a game aimed at children, so children will probably want to play on the um, easy mode, where basically you can't crash by uh, driving into a wall, and um, basically all the difficulty of the game then is the time limit. As you might see at the top of the screen, it will come up and say like you've got uh, 55 minutes left, 50 minutes left. So you got an hour to do like your uh, rounds, basically. And that will include probably two or three letter delivery missions and an actual mission of doing a parcel or whatever. God, I keep saying missions, I'm making it sound like Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's kind of similar. It is, it is, trust me guys. <laughs> But I mean, once you've learned the map and where things are, because the difficulty on the easy mode is time running out, and the difficulty then is like uh, finding the locations you need to go for your, like, well, there's only three missions. Um, once you're not racing against the clock, there's literally no difficulty to the game at all. So really, the only way to play it is on difficult difficulty mode and boy guys it is really easy to crash the van into a wall especially when you want to make some slight adjustments just to come down lower in the screen so you're not going to run the risk of going to the, the cyclist you can easily mess up your timing by going down right or down left oh I just finished the first uh, delivery the first round of the first day there we go brilliant and we're now on to delivering six letters but yeah, making slight adjustments to the van um, can be very, very difficult. And uh, you get the timing wrong, you can easily end up flying into a wall. Sometimes the game sort of spasses out a bit and gets a bit confused and sends the van going in the completely wrong direction and you end up crashing. And because brake is basically the reverse of the direction you're currently going, it makes it very hard to sort of stop and correct mistakes. Oh, and of course, there's a little glitch there. So to sort that glitch out, you need to sort of move off to another, uh, yeah, like that, basically. So if, if I went back and continued in the same um, horizontal line, the letter would still flown off in the opposite direction. So you just need to correct yourself into a slightly different horizontal plane, and uh, then the letter will work. Oh, here's an area we haven't been yet, but it's actually another same about the same distance to the post office. Just looping around the back of everything, and uh, we won't have the uh, cyclist spawning here. I, be I believe uh, the cyclist is Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Hubbard, uh, but I don't think it's confirmed in the in the manual. Actually, let's read the let's read the manual now. The manual has. Um, it seemed like just another just another day to pass as he climbed out of bed. Little did he know that the what? Little did he know that the would be rushed off his feet by oh dear. 
spelling and grammar mistakes, unless that's a bad translation of the manual I'm reading. Uh, little did he know that he would be rushed off his feet by all the hard, all the work that faced him this morning as he did his round of Greendale. Yes, we're, we're in Greendale, guys. Parcels, letters, and all sorts of odd jobs will keep him very busy. You can help Pat and Jess. Now, Jess is his uh, companion, the black and white cat. Although we don't actually get to see or play as or interact with Jess, his cat. But he is there um, to the right of the plane area, depicted below Pat. <laughs> um, yeah, so yes, you can help Pat and Jess to get the job done by guiding his van around the village. Uh, you start the game by finding the post office where Mrs. Goggins, it is Mrs. Goggins, right, um, who will tell Pat what he must deliver. It will uh, be either a number of letters or a parcel for one of Pat's friends. You can drive around the village and you can reverse if you need to turn around. In order to find your friend's house and deliver the parcel, letters are delivered to the houses which flash as you pass them. To, to deliver a letter, just press the fire button as you pass the house. If you miss, uh, you have to get Pat out of the van by using the fire button and guide him to pick up the letter and then try again. If Peter Fogg's sheep gets loose, you can help him by herding the sheep back through the gate. You must find them yourself. Watch out for oil slicks on the road and try not to knock, uh, not to knock over Miss Hubbard, who is very unsafe on her wobbly bike. Oh, it is Miss Hubbard. Right, okay. Uh, because Pat is such a busy chap, you only have a short time to complete all your tasks. And if you run out of time, the game is over. And there we go. That's all the manual tells us. Pretty self-explanatory, really. Yes, guys, it's Paperboy meets Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Please take this parcel. Let's hope it's to, um, to Ted Glenn. Yes. This is uh, basically the sheep mission spawning now. And the third and final mission we need to do on this game. Um, hmm. Let's talk about the other versions very quickly um, of the game. Now the Specky version um, is decent graphics for the Specky. Um, they tried to get as much colour uh, in as possible. It has an okay rendition of the theme on the title screen. Nowhere near as good as this though. But no music in game. Uh, but plays pretty much identically to the CPC version and pretty much the same speed. Now. Commodore 64 version moves a lot faster, in fact maybe too fast, especially on the difficult level where you're going to end up crashing over and over and over again. Um, there's no delay in switching screens unlike the Amstrad version here. Look how the screen goes completely black for about a second before the next screen pops up. That is not good. Um, but the C64 doesn't have that problem. Um, but the music is nowhere near as good as the CPC version, weirdly, um, considering it's the SID chip. Except this sounds much better on the Amstrad, for once. Um, also, you see there we arrive at a destination, and you just need to drive to a certain radius around it, and Pat will automatically jump out the van. On the Commodore 64 version, um, there's like a very specific spot to hit. And it's actually quite hard to find. You might end, might end up like, finding yourself crashing. And that's unlike the Amstrad and the Specky versions, which has like a nice big wide radius. So that's pretty stupid on the Commodore version. Um, so I would say if you just want to relax and not worry about crashing and all that kind of stuff and just sort of chill out and switch your mind off and bask in nostalgia of Postman Pat, probably the Commodore 64 version is better because of the speed but only on the easy difficulty um, it's ab absolutely a nightmare to play on difficult level so if you want to play on difficult level and um, the CPC wins overall because the pace is just right and makes the game playable on that mode ah here we go right we're at Peter Fogg's farm and he's asking us to please round up my sheep so this is the last part of the uh, third and final big mission we've now got to find the sheep round them up and herd them back into their field. Oh, oh yes, of course guys, this actually did also appear on the Amiga and Atari ST. Um, it plays pretty much identically to the 8-bit versions and has the same map. Um, but Alternative Software shoved in some extra games to play. 
in the menu screen of a Snakes and Ladders Ludo and Snap to try and justify the higher price tag. Oh dear. Um, a bit cheeky of them really, um, trying to add value and content, but uh, I, I will say that the frame rate on the SD version is really bad. There we go. So that's the other versions, guys. Oh, here we go. This is where the sheep are. <laughs> and there's the little sheepies, and we're controlling Pat. We just need to sort of scare them to the exit in the top left. And this can be kind of a bit glitchy. And the sprites sort of flicker and flash a bit as well. And normally this is actually quite this is quite quick and easy to do. But there's like three sheep there that are very stubborn and won't move off that back wall. So we've got one there, second and then the third one. Now we've got these three annoying sheep that don't normally sort of behave like this. Look, they're about to move and then they stop. And some, sometimes they just warp around the screen sometimes as well. You might have noticed that a little bit happening just then. Um, so actually at this point I was getting a bit worried actually. At, is this, um, have I glitched this out? Am I actually going to be able to get the sheep moved? Well, one breaks free, so I decided to just get that one done. Cool, and now we've just got these two left. Oh, there they go, finally! They're being a bit reluctant though, the naughty sheepies. And there we go. Get a nice bonus score. And now go to the post office. Got an awkward reversing thing here. It was quite difficult to do. Now, guys, how are you, how are you coping listening to this music on repeat? <laughs> is, is it driving you insane? I bet it was half the people watching this. The music would have driven them insane. And the other half would have been loving this. <laughs> loving the music. Do you know what? I actually kind of like the music a lot on this. So jolly. So well done, actually. Whether this is like really great in you, on you or not the music, you can't deny this is actually a very, very good rendition of the Placement Pat theme. Perfectly suited for a computer game rendition of it. And I'm sure the Kitty Winks will love it. And not too far off the post office. Okay, two screens away. So the oil stick just moved me a little bit there. There's 40 minutes left, easily done, and then we get rewarded with a cup of tea <laughs> from, Miss, uh, from Mrs. Goggins. And she now just tells us we now have to deliver eight letters. So we'll get we'll get up to like where we get have to do like ten uh, letter deliveries, ten letters being delivered. Sorry, and that's where we'll end this uh, long play because I don't think there is an ending to this game, guys, at all. Um, I actually went to the lengths of uh, getting a debugger open on in, in an emulator and actually pouring through the uh, code and stuff like that looking for all the text and messages and things like that. I found all the usual messages here like driving van deliveries and um, you have X amount of minutes left and take this parcel to so and so. But there is no message or text I found anywhere in the game code that says well done, you have uh, completed the game or anything like that. I think the game just loops endless endlessly. But I do wonder what would happen if we get to like 999 letters to be delivered what would happen on the uh, bottom scoreboard but I don't think the programmers for anyone would be insane enough to actually do that <laughs> oh as for magazine reviews at the time um, Amsterdam Action um, I looked at all the magazines from around that time in 88, 89 even, a, uh, even somewhere into 1990 because uh, it was reviewed in a French magazine in about like uh, 
like mid 1990 for some weird reason. But anyway, but I can't find any review of this game. It may have been retrospectively reviewed in a much later issue, a year or two later. But I'm not going to look through every single issue of Hampshire Back Action to find what they have scored this. Um, and as for my review score, guys, it's a really difficult game to score because really technically this is aimed at kids. Um, but they have given us a difficulty mode uh, for like us adults to play. Um, I think um, I know a lot of you, a lot of my subs, uh, have talked about this game before, and they love it to bits. They have really nice memories of it. I think it's just because it's such a nice, simple little game. Um, it's really well presented. Actually, really well presented for a budget game. Thinking about all the different graphics, how colourful and nice they are. Okay, this is maybe not so good inside this uh, <laughs> inside the post office here. But at least you get a little animation there of Postman Patrick and some tea and all that kind of stuff. Um, this is exceptionally well done for a budget game. In fact, it probably could have been almost full price uh, as a uh, kids game. But um, uh, yeah, and I think this actually sold really, really well. Um, I saw that um, it first entered the charts, and I saw it in, looking in uh, old C and V G magazines in around August of 1989, and it was actually quite high in the charts for a few months, I believe. Um, so yeah, this sold well, and it is well liked, and it probably is so for a re good reason. Yes, it's not going to be like um, the best game on the Amstrad. You can't compare it to things like. Grizzle and Chase HQ and, and Renegade and things like that, but for what it is, it's actually pretty good stuff. Um, yes, um, oh, this is oh, Miss Hobbit does actually cycle by the church sometimes. Interesting, it's the first time I've seen that happen, anyway. Um, and she also does a few cycling routes near Hogs Farm in the southeast of the map, so watch out for her there too. But yes, any road that has a left, a straight road that has a left and right exit, you may get mishovered hovered on a bicycle, so watch out for it and just try and stick to the bottom of the screen. So yeah, we're talking about review scores. Um, hard to score this one, guys. Um, it loses marks for some glitches, um, a game-breaking bug on the sheet mission, so you need to play the uh, fixed version of the game, which you can get from the, uh, which you can get from the CPC Power website. Sorry. Um, and it does uh, get very repetitive very quickly. Once you've done the free missions, there's not much else to do. Um, but do you know what? This is actually quite a relaxing little game to play for maybe half an hour when you want to chill out and relive some nostalgic memories from your childhood. Um, so with all that taken into account, I'm, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. And it might have got a little bit higher than that if it wasn't for some uh, orc controls, um, some uh, glitches and a game breaking bug involved. So we're now on nine deliveries of letters. <laughs> so yeah guys, I may be a bit generous but like, I don't know, it's hard one to judge when it's a game aimed at children. Um, you know what, I need, I need to get... Um, Let's test it out. Test this out on some younger children, rather than me as an adult, and see what they think of the game. That might be an interesting video one day. But who knows? So it's always worth reversing onto the previous screen. Now look, another house has spawned there. Not there. Has it re another one spawned it? No. So I'll just head down to the rest of the village here. But there's no other houses anywhere else to deliver letters to. So it's nice that the houses are all fairly clustered together. Oh, then we get that glitch. <laughs> Frankly, the oil did us a favour there by shifting the van up a little bit. And that sorted that problem out. There's a couple of houses here. There we go. <laughs> now there were actually uh, two more Postman Pat games on the Amstrad, Postman Pat 2 and Postman Pat 3, believe it or not. <laughs> um, obviously because Postman Pat 1 sold uh, really, really well. Um, Postman Pat 2 I've not played yet, 
although I've seen screenshots, it looks a very, um, it's a side-on f- uh, thing where you're wandering around the village. It looks kind of dull, it's in black and white, and uh, not full colour like this, which is a bit of a shame. Um, Postman Pat 3 is very similar to this one, it's much more of a, like a paperboy clone. Um, you just literally drive a van, the van up the road and uh, just throw letters at houses and that's literally all there is to it, I believe. Now is this the end? There we go, they finished the last day there. And that is me done long playing this game. I think uh, we'll have a look at a couple of bits that you wouldn't have seen normally in a long play. For example, we'll see what happens when Pat crashes and uh, and we'll have a listen to what the game sounds like without any music and the sound effects on. So there you go, there's Pat just crashed. Oops, you've crashed, get another van. We'll go to the garage. It looks like the van has run us over. Pat disappears inside the van, but that he's not in the van. Weird. And we start to put Pat's house. And let's crash our last van here. And what happens when Pat has taken some really naughty drugs <laughs> and he's driving illegally. Ah, Pat's gone postal. <laughs> now this really does feel like GTA. There we go. <laughs> the crash the last van and it's game over. And then we get to run to our name in the high school table. So there we go, guys. Mm. And uh, yeah. An 8 out of 10 from me, and I'm top of the high school table there by an absolute mile. So we shall do one last thing before we finish the, uh, this uh, video. We're going to turn the music off and listen to the sound effects. Now are you ready for this uh, boys and girls? Are you ready? Yep. That is the van noise. That sounds bloody dreadful. It actually sounds like the game has crashed. That's the noise a game makes when it crashes normally. And this is the noise of Pat's van. Oh dear. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. See you again soon. Goodbye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that, if you did please click a like below, leave a comment and also subscribe if you haven't already, and over that way there's another video for you to check out, Zypho out.